So after Jesus has spoken thus of St. Marshall, and he talks about a Roman boy who was, who was murdered, which is another um, event in the poem of the man God. You're all blessed by me in this farewell. As from the Father, I invoke the reward for those who have comforted the sorrowful journey of the Son of Man. Blessed be mankind in the chosen part there is among Hebrews and Gentiles, and that has manifested itself in its love for me. Blessed be the earth with its herbs and flowers and its fruits that have given me pleasure and refreshment so many times. Blessed be the earth with its waters and its tepidness for its birds and its animals that many a time exceeded man in giving relief to the son of man. May you be blessed son and you sea and you mountains, hills and plains. Blessed you stars my companions in my night prayers, and in my sorrow, and you, moon, who illuminated me as I wandered around in my pilgrimages of the evangelizer. May all you creatures be blessed, the works of my father, my companions in this mortal hour, friendly to him who had left heaven to relieve tortured mankind of the troubles of the sin that separates from God. And may you also be blessed, you innocent instruments of my torture, thorns, metals, wood, twisted hemp, because you've assisted me in fulfilling the will of my father. That, as I interrupt the narrative again, is a, it's an echo of Daniel chapter three, where Jesus said, where the Holy Spirit inspired Daniel um, to sing the hymn which is recited in the divine office. So all you works of the Lord have blessed the Lord. Fire and heat bless the Lord. Snow and mist rest bless the Lord. Wild beasts and tame bless the Lord. Frost and hail bless the Lord. And so on and so on. And it's, um, it's also reminiscent of Saint Francis of Assisi who speaks to creation and the things of creation as if they're sentient beings. But there's a sense in which we can speak and, and speak to um, the, the inanimate objects of the world because they, they come to us from God. And that's what St. Francis of Assisi was doing. But I shall resume the narrative again. How thundering is Jesus' voice. It spreads through the tepid calm air like a bronze gong that has been struck. It propagates in waves over the sea of faces looking at him from all directions. I say that there are hundreds of people around Jesus as he goes up with his more beloved ones towards the top of the Mount of Olives. But when Jesus arrives at the field of the Galileans, in which there are no tents in this period of time between the two festivities, he says to his disciples, stop the people where they are and then follow me. He climbs further up, as far as the highest summit of the mountain, the one closer to Bethany, which it dominates from above than to Jerusalem. Close to him are his mother, the apostles, Lazarus, the shepherds and Marjum. Farther away in a semicircle are the other disciples to hold the people back. Jesus is standing on a large stone that protrudes a little and stands out in its whiteness among the grass of a clearing. He is brightly illuminated by the sun that makes his garment shine as white as snow and his hair like gold. His eyes sparkle in a divine light. He opens out his arms in the gesture of an embrace. He seems to be wishing to press to his chest the multitudes of the earth whom his spirit sees represented in that crowd. His unforgettable, inimitable voice gives the last order. Go, go in my name to evangelize the peoples as far as the ends of the earth. God be with you. May his love comfort you. May his light guide you. May his peace dwell in you until you reach eternal life. He becomes transfigured in beauty, handsome, 
as handsome and even more so than he was on Tabor. They all fall on their knees worshipping. While he is already rising from the stone on which he is standing, he looks once again for the face of his mother and his smile reaches a power that no one will ever be able to express. It is his last goodbye to his mother. He rises, rises, the sun now more free to kiss him as no foliage, not even a thin leaf intercepts its beams, brightens with its splendour the God-man who with his most holy body is ascending to heaven and displays his glorious wounds that shine like living rubies. The rest is a pearly smile of light and it is really the light that is revealing itself for what it is at this last moment as on Christmas night. Creation sparkles in the light of the Christ who is ascending, a light exceeding that of the sun, a superhuman and most blissful light, a light descending from heaven to meet the light ascending to it. And Jesus Christ, the Word of God, disappears from the sight of men in this ocean of brightness. On the earth, only two noises in the deep silence of the ecstatic crowd. The cry of Mary when he disappears, Jesus! And the weeping of Isaac. The others are struck dumb with religious astonishment. And they remain there as if they were waiting until two snow-white angelical lights in human form appear, repeating the words mentioned in the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. And there the vision comes to an end.